Hello, in this video, Robert Kiyosaki, the one who wrote the book, The Cash Flow Quadrant, is saying money is dead. That's video number 62. Please join me. Hello, welcome to Take a Step to a Better You. Today we are continuing We're reading the book, The Cash Flow Quadrant by Robert Kiyosaki, and he's saying money is debt. What do you think? If you are returning, I appreciate you very much. Please always like the video, always share. Think of someone who could benefit from the message and leave a comment, especially if you come on a premiere. Remember to add a comment on the video. For those of you who are new, welcome. I appreciate you very much being here. My name is Sherifa Nakalema, I'm a business owner here in Virginia, USA. And on here, I'll show you my schedule. I'm here daily. I share business tips and these are in books. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, business tips. Um, money, anything to do with money. And then uh, on Thursday, I like to just share anything interesting. I drive around, I show you USA. And then I'm in Virginia. And then on Friday, I come live, we discuss any topic, anything, taking our life to the next level. Uh, Saturday is specific. I'll, I'm live again, but this time affiliate marketing. If you want to master affiliate marketing with me, that's what we do. I share my tips. We discuss affiliate marketing and man online. And then on Sunday is motivation. That's when we get to feel good. Okay, you come on Sunday. We do motivation. 9:30 a.m. U.S. Eastern time. When you look at that schedule, so you have to know what 9:30 a.m. U.S. Eastern is in your country. And then. Uh, but on Sunday, I moved that just on that Sunday. Uh, everything else is 9.30 a.m., but Sunday I made it 1.30 p.m. intentionally because of uh, my viewers from Africa, uh, they tend to like that time, for like it's evening time, okay? So this book is called The Cash Flow Quadrant by Robert Kiyosaki because, by the way, Robert is the one who wrote the famous Rich Dad Poor Dad, if you're familiar with this one. I finished this already, 68 videos, if you want to, to watch them. It's uh, called Rich Dad Quadrant, Lessons from Robert Kiyosaki. Now, he called this the cash flow quadrant, this one, because according to him, he, ran, he learned this from his rich dad. <laughs> Money comes to us from four quadrants. See where yours is coming from. On the left, you are an employee or you are a self-employed person. E stands for employee, S, self-employed or small business. On the right, you are a large business owner. That means you have some employees and all that. And then, or oh, you are an investor. So that's the cash flow quadrant. He's explaining that in all these videos. This is video number 62. And that's why he said money is dead. I continue to read. But in, I have to always remind you what happened in 61. In case even you missed it, even those who are following me all the time. So 61, he was saying, are savings assets? He answered that. Uh, saving assets. In fact, it was an interesting conversation about banks and savings. They don't want your savings. Isn't that interesting? If you missed it, uh, you have to go back to all of them because all of them are found in a pinned comment starting from video number one. You just keep switch. Uh, I name them the videos according to what's going on in the message. So you can skip, you can watch some, you skip some. But number 61 was uh, uh, saving assets. And then but because right now 62 is on top or at the end. If you go backwards one one line, one one skip, you get to the previous one. Uh, this book is audio, is free for one month. Amazon Audible. Link in the description. You have to provide your name though before they can allow you to, to watch it for free, to listen. And then if you want to read the real book, you have to pay for that one. Also, link in the description, text you on Amazon. End screen also uh, I call it, I think, financial freedom it will take you to all of them also when this video ends, okay? Announcements, I have to put those in. Now, let's see what he's saying about money is debt. By the way, I, I, I name these. I give them the, the name, the, I mean the videos, but from what he's saying. So it's not really starting with that, but it will come as I'm reading, okay? Now he says, the name of the game. That's the title he has, subtitle. You know, I just continue to read, I stop, I continue like that. So that's where I had stopped now. He said, the name of the game. In 1974, Robert is writing, my rich dad was upset 
because the game was played against me and I didn't know it. I had bought this investment property and had taken a losing position, yet I'd been led to believe it was an evening position, a winning position. So now, Rich Dad is in quotes. He said, I'm glad you entered the game, said Rich Dad. But because no one has ever told you what the game is, you've just been sucked over to the losing team. Wow. So Rich Dad then explained the basics of the game. The name of the game, it's in quotes, he's speaking. The name of the game of capitalism is who is indebted to whom? Once I knew the game, I could be a better player instead of someone who just had the game run all over them. Now, another subtitle, the more people you are indebted to, indebted to the poorer you are, you become more poor. Okay, and he continued with quotes, the more people you are indebted to, the poorer you are, said Rich Dad. And the more people you have indebted to you, the wealthier you are. That's the game. As I, as I said, as, as I said, I struggled to keep my mind open. So I stayed silent and let him explain. This is like Robert said. And then all this is a long paragraph said by Rich Dad. And I found it very interesting. Hopefully you will too. We are all in debt to someone else. The problems occur when the debt gets out of balance. Unfortunately, the poor people of this world have been run over so hard by the game that they often can't get any deeper into debt. The same is true for poor countries. The world simply takes from the poor, the weak, and the financial uninformed. If you have too much debt, the world takes everything you have, including your time, your work, your home, your life, your confidence, even your dignity. If you let them, I don't make the rules, but I do know the game, and I play it well. I'll explain the game to you if you want to learn to play. Then, after you've mastered the game, you can decide what to do with what you know. Remember, this was Rich Dad talking to Robert, just like a long time ago. That's really very interesting. Okay, I'm continuing though. This is where I got the title. Money is dead. That's the, the subtitle here. Rich Dad went on to explain that even our currency isn't an instrument of equity, but an instrument of debt. Every dollar used to be backed by gold or silver, but is now an IOU guaranteed to be paid by the taxpayers of the issuing country. As long as the rest of the world has confidence in the American taxpayer to work and pay for the IOU called money, the world has confidence in our dollar. If that's in our dollar, if that key element of money, confidence, suddenly disappears, the economy calms down like a house of cards. And I, I didn't warn you that this one is a longer video today because I have to finish where it ends uh, the, the, this topic. So hopefully I find it interesting enough that you'll finish. Okay, take the example of the German Weinmann government. Okay, let me do that again. Take the example of the German when my government marks that became utterly worthless just before World War II. I think this is a story in the history books. As one story goes, an elderly woman was pushing a wheelbarrow full of marks to buy a loaf of bread. Okay, marks the money. When she turned her back, someone stole the wheelbarrow and left a pile of worthless money all over the street. That must have been a story. That's why most money today is known as fiat money. Money that cannot be converted to something tangible, like gold or silver. The money is only good as long as people have confidence in the government backing it. Today, much of the global economy is based on debt and confidence. As long as all keep holding hands and no one breaks, Ranks, everything will be fine. By the way, the word fine, fine is in quotes, F-I-N-E, is my acronym for, here what he calls fine, feeling insecure 
neurotic and emotional. Remember he said, I have to read this again if you are going to enjoy whatever he's doing here. He says, as long as we keep, okay, today, much of the global economy is based on debt and confidence. As long as we all keep holding hands and no one else, uh, else and no one breaks ranks, everything will be fine. So meaning everything will be feeling insecure, neurotic, and emotional. <laughs> because he said that's for fine times, fine folks. These guys are very interesting. So uh, the subheading, who is indebted to whom? Going back to 1974, when I was learning how to buy that 56,000 dollar condo, my rich dad taught me an important lesson on how to structure deals. Who is indebted to whom is the name of the game, said rich dad. And somebody just stuck you in the debt. It's like going to dinner with 10 friends. You go to the restroom, and when you come back, the bill is there, but all 10 friends are gone. If you're going to play the game, then you had better understand it. Know the rules, speak the same language, and know with whom you are playing. If you don't, instead of playing the game, the game will be played on you. Okay, it says another subtitle here. It says only it's only a game. At first, I got angry. Now Robert is writing, responding to what Rich Dad was saying. At first, I got angry at what Rich Dad was saying. But I listened and did my best to understand. Finally, he put into a context that I could understand. You love playing football, don't you? He asked me. He asked him, Robert. I nodded my head. I love the game, I said. Anyway, I'm about to finish now. Well, money is a game. Uh, well, money is a game, is my game, Robert, uh, Richard was saying. I love the money game, but for many people, money isn't a game. I said, okay, uh, Robert was responding. I need to go back a little bit. Re Richard was saying, well, money is my game. I love the money game. And then Robert said, but for many people, money isn't a game. That's correct, Robert, uh, Richard said. For most people, it's survival. For most people, money is a game they are forced to play and they hate it. Unfortunately, the more civilized we get, civilized we get, the more money become the more money becomes part of our lives. Then Rich Dad drew the cash flow quadrant. Remember the cash flow quadrant I showed at the beginning, the E, S, B, and I. He drew it and he said, I'm reading the last part now. Just look at this that he's asking Robert to just look at the image of ESBI that see it as a tennis court. Just look at this as a tennis court, that image. Football field, soccer field. If you are going to play the money game, which team do you want to be on? Do you want to be on the E, S, B, or I? Or which side of the court? Do you want to be on the right side or the left? So uh, I quickly pointed to the right side. So you have to see this. That's a good clue. What, what do you think? Think of something you love and then start seeing this quadrant <laughs> as that. Because he said, if it's a game, look at it. Which side do you want to be on? Which side? And he chose the right. And he did it. So that's the end of reading of 62. Hopefully it will not turn out to be a very long video, but I still have to mention something. When I read that part about poor people and poor countries, it made me very sad. You know, it said that the world takes from the poor, the weak, the financially uninformed. And he included poor countries. Do you know rich countries pretend to be helping poor countries? They, yes, they just take away from them and they give them this debt that will never pay back it's really tough because living um, here in the USA, they say they land opportunities, but people are poor. They are struggling. But the, the payments you have to make, like in the previous video, we saw that a large percentage of it is interest. You make payments, you never finish these loans. Like you pay, and um, people pay, and every pay, the whole payment is like 90% of it. You're just paying interest. And you're reducing just a little bit on the debt. 
So you're gonna be in debt forever. And guess what they do next? When you have a lot of debt, they call debt to whatever ratio they, they use. I'm not in that area. I mean, I, I mean, misquote, so I stopped, I didn't quote it. But when they are trying to find out if you are a good person to lend to, they look at those ratios. They call it the credit score here in USA. They go in numbers. The good ones have like 900, 800. The bad ones numbers have like 400 or less. If you have less than even 600, they don't want to lend to you. And you know why? Because they are already lent you too much, you are in too much debt, you are paying off, it's not reducing, and now they say they can't lend to you. If they lend to you, they double the interest again on you. That's a game. It's a bad game, actually. It's a sad game. Because the poor people are the ones that give the bad interest rates, and they already have debt, and then the ones who have good credit, the ones who already have the money, they are given the lower interest rate. It's so unfair. So that's that message in this video makes me emotional, actually. They, they kick you out of the system. They don't want to even to lend to you because you have debt, the debt they gave you, that you are trying hard to work and pay off. You can't pay it off because too much interest. And now they, well, I mean, if, if they, they, you afford to get some more, it will be higher. They charge you more. So unfair. It's bad, actually. What do you think? It's bad. So they keep you out of that. They make sure you don't enter that circle. Those 10% whatever. So if someone can start a company and become a billionaire, where are those billions coming from? From the people consuming that whatever they are selling or providing the service and they're sucking, sucking and taking it, right? They should maybe one day just give it. I remember Bill Gates wanted to convince rich people to just give away money. They need to give away money because they give it, they get from the communities. Okay, that's politics maybe. Please leave a comment, I'm feeling mad right now. They can't do that, they can't continue to do that. Okay, at some point something needs to be fair. Okay, they are the ones with money and the ones giving more. Remember Richard was telling us that at some point they want to give it to you, just give it to the banks. Because you are so good, they know you know how to manage the money, then they want to give it to you. But they can't give it to the people who really need it. Leave a comment for me concerning that, please. What do you think? We're going to be poor forever, and the rich will get more rich. Like I always end them. I say, take very good care of yourself. Take very good care of your families. Take very good care of your health. Let's learn to make our own money, and without even borrowing from them. Take a step to a better you. Bye-bye.